Hi everyone, welcome John here. Today's video is going to be uh, a demo of a, a stats website, uh, scraping the information from that and also we're going to talk a little bit about how you would want to approach working out what method of scraping is best for you. So I got sent this website for, for um, by a viewer so thank you very much for that. It's a stats website for the AFL. Um, if we were to go to view source like we might do to start with, we would see that there is not an awful, not much here. Uh, none of the actual data is here, just some of the uh, surrounding stuff. So that's no use to us. So we couldn't use Request and Beautiful Soup to get this information out. If we scroll down, we can see there are 827 total results over multiple pages. So you might think maybe Selenium would be a good choice. You could load up every page and click on this, these buttons maybe to get the information. But there is a better way. I've touched a bit on this on a different video. I always now, this is my go-to first um, port of call for scraping websites like this, uh, which clearly aren't, it's not, an, it's clearly not an HTML table. So what we want to do is you want to go to inspect element and then head over to the network tab. And over here, if you click on XHR, now if you refresh the page, it's going to give us all of the um, requests that the website is making to get the information. So if we look down here, we can see the type is, is JSON. Now, straight away I can see, and I think that this data is coming from an API, which is probably not accessible by us. But having said that, when we look at these GET requests, there's this one here, which is CDS202014. We click on that. It's uh, the player stats from StatsPro the season and this is obviously the current season so we click on the response and we can see this has been tr truncated which is fine but this seems to be all of the player data look we've got the name surname height weight kicking foot that's interesting the team and the games oh this person hasn't played any games so sucks to be them um, so they've got no stats but this is really interesting because this website has then called this API to load all this data. Now what we can do is we can actually mimic that request, the get request, and we can actually get that information ourselves in VS Code and download this JSON nice and easily. Now to do that, we're gonna use a program called Postman, which is for testing APIs and replicating API calls. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click on the request that we wanted, and I'm gonna go copy, and I'm gonna do copy as curl, C-U-R-L, uh, windows that's important so now we're going to tab uh, minimize out of that and go to postman if you haven't downloaded postman you can go to the website postman.com and download it um, once you get going it'll look like this instead of clicking new let's click import and we can go raw text and we can paste in that curl request that we got there if we click continue and import we get it open in a little tab here and it shows us the URL, we're doing a GET request, and the headers that we are sending with that request. If we just look at some of these headers really quick, we can see that we are sending a user agent of Firefox, and we are looking for JSON, language, the referrer, which is the website, the content type, and a miss, uh, media miss token. So this is gonna be quite important because without this token, we're actually gonna get rejected when we send this request. Um, so let's hit send. And it's going to come back and it's going to return this JSON data, which we, which we just saw in the browser. So what we've done is we've basically skipped the browser scraping and we've gone directly to the API endpoint where the actual website was getting the information from. As I said that this token is really important. So if we untick this token, which means we're not going to be sending that, we click send, we're going to get access to this site is forbidden. Um, so we're going to retick that and we can see that we get all the information back now. What's really cool about Postman is we can click on this little button here that says code. We click on that, we can see that it gives us all the options to, to download the code snippet. And the one that I've got highlighted already is Python, Python requests. Now, any of you that have done any kind of web scraping will know some of this and it will look pretty familiar. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Uh, minimize Postman and I'm going to paste this right into our VS code. So this looks pretty good straight away. Uh, for some reason, it gives us an empty payload dictionary. I'm not entirely sure why, but we can see we've got all of the other headers that we wanted, including this token, which we need. 
Um, I'm not going to run this right now because if you do, it's just going to print out a load of data at the end. I'm actually going to remove this print statement and I'm going to change this, this um, request a little bit just so it's a bit tidier, a bit more how I like it. So instead of response, I like to call it R and we don't need to do request.request .request with a get here. We know we can just do request.get, remove that URL uh, and we can um, <clears throat> remove this as well because we don't need this as there's nothing in it. Okay, so to get our request, which we know is going to be a load of JSON data, because we can see it here, we ran it from the Postman, we're going to need to import JSON. So let's do that now, import JSON. And we can do, let's call it player data is equal to r.json. So all that's going to do is it's going to take the JSON response from our r variable, and it's going to load it into our player data. So now we have a JSON dictionary within player data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly run that and check that I've got no errors. We don't, so that's good. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can all see nicely. Um, and I'm going to do uh, Python 3 dash I and then the Python file. Again, Python 3 for me, it might just be Python for you. So let's just check some of our data. So let's go player data dot keys. And let's see what keys are available for us in here. So we can see we've got search, total results, and players. So that is this, these ones here, total result, uh, search, total results, and players. So if I was going, if I did um, player data and asked for the total results key, we've got the value, which is 827. To make our lives a bit easier, I'm actually going to download the response. I'm going to save it as a file just so we can open it in VS Code and we can look at them at the same time. So let's open that up. Okay, so this is the total response. And if we go back to our website and get rid of that, we can see that let's look for this guy, search. Okay, so we've got him there and we can see that he has played nine games and has lots of stats. I'm not going to confess to know what all of these stats are or what they mean, um, as I don't know the sport particularly well. Although I did watch some videos of it earlier and it looks pretty brutal. Okay, so now we've got this open here, we can see that there's a lot of information, but what the information that we're probably most interested in is under the, let's go back to the top. So we don't want search, we don't want total results, but we do want players. So we want to get all the player information. Um, so if we go, let's say player data, um, player, with players, I think. And then we do, let's go for zero for the first one. So we can see we've just got all of the information for the first player on the list, which is Jez McLennan. Um, this guy who hasn't actually played any games, so there's no stats for him. What we want to do now is get this data and put it into a format that we can easily uh, analyze or manipulate. Um, so that generally is Excel or CSV. Now, the best way to do that is always to use pandas in my opinion, but because of the way that the JSON is, it's all nested. So if we look back at it here, we've got, um, it starts off with uh, the list and then we've got things indented and we've got all sorts of different things. We can't just load this straight into pandas, but what we can do is we can do, um, we can use pandas to do JSON normalize for us. And what that will do is it will take everything and it will expand it out and make it into a bit of an easier chunk of data to see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our player data. Um, we're gonna actually just import pandas as PD as we always do. And then underneath here, we're gonna do DF for our data frame is equal to PD and we're gonna do JSON normalize. As I said, that's gonna take our JSON, it's gonna flatten it all out, it's gonna normalize it all so we can actually see it all in a data frame. Um, and then we're gonna put in player data. But as, we show, as I showed you down here with the keys, we don't want the search, the total results, or the total results key, we actually only want the player's key. So I'm gonna put that in there like this. So if we save that, and if we just run that, we should get nothing, no output and no errors. Okay, that's great. So now we can just do 
let's do df dot uh, let's print df dot head to get us the first five results just to check that it's all working properly we can see that we have got five the top five rows and 134 columns and it looks like that has split out games played the name and all of the individual stats which is what we want so all the, the last thing we want to do is dot do df dot two csv and let's give it our name of uh, player data dot csv and i'm going to do index is equal to false so we don't have the pandas index zero to um, what, however many there are and we're going to run that that's worked now we can see we have this player data dot csv it's kind of hard to see in vs code but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to reveal it in explorer and i'm going to open it in excel and um, we'll make that a bit bigger and we can see that we have got all of this data here so we've got player id games played name it's high everything so we could easily analyze this data so we've got 134 columns so let's do um let's have a quick look and see who is the tallest player let's do search sort by largest and smallest so these two guys are both 2.1 211 centimeters tall cracky that's really tall um and we can do who's played the most games so all these guys have played the full 12 games by the looks of it um, so you could do all sorts of data analysis on that so that's it guys hopefully you found this really useful i'm just going to recap real quick make sure you go to the network tab on the inspect element check xhr refresh your page and see what you get you might just get lucky you might find the json data copy that as curl put it into postman you can manipulate requests. This one did. This one gave us all 827 results in one go. Sometimes they're paginated, but that'll be in the headers somewhere. So go ahead and change it. So you want page one, page two, page three, or results number one to 100, or 101 to 200, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you can copy that code out and put it into VS Code and get working. The last thing is to make sure that if your JSON data looks like this one, you do PD dot um, JSON normalize. And we chose the player's key. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you found this useful. Um, I thought this was a really cool, um, cool website and a great way to get all of the player data out for this uh, specific season. This will work for other websites as well, if it looks like this one did. Um, so let me know how you get on. Uh, any more questions, write some comments, hit the like button and subscribe for more uh, web scraping comment content to come. And also check out my previous videos as well for extra web scraping content. Cheers, bye.